Hi, Shed Hacks. Now, a couple of viewers have asked me about how to put things together, and I think a few are struggling. So, I'm going to show you the design, and the design is full size. And you can see there's the actual train. It's only a small train, this one, but it's for younger students. And I'm just going to take the wheels off. Okay, and the wheels will be lined up. Can you see? So, once you put these parts in, put this together comes in two parts, like there. It slots together. The line for each wheel should be exactly the same. And you can mark it there, in line. And then you mark them the same, going through to the other side. So it's a bit of common sense, really, on this one. So I wanted just to remind you about how it's put together. The top there is another rebate you can mark out, for two lines. And cut it out with the chiselling technique I've showed you before uh, as you did for that one but you can see clearly how it goes together and what I suggest is you use this design or something similar all the time and you can see it's really handy because it's full size okay so I'm going to quickly show you a little bit more there's the design um, the part here where the window is. I'm just going to briefly show you how it's cut out. So you mark it out, yeah, and you can mark out the distance it can change, and you can mark out the cut at the, at the other side there, that part there. So let's reiterate, that is that cut, and that window there is the window there. Okay, right. So to do this, you mark lines, because it's made in two parts, and you simply cut these out and chisel them out. Okay, and you can do that with a tenon saw. <clears throat> and a tenon saw is here. Here's a tenon saw. <clears throat> and you put that in vice, and it should cut, cut it out. And you do one on each end on the inside of the line, keeping it parallel. I suggest you put this in the vice to help you. And you do another one and another one, and then you can chisel that out. Or you could use a coping saw. When you get down to the bottom, you turn it and you go across. Yeah, you could put a coping saw in the in the tenon saw hole and turn it and go across the bottom there. Really simple stuff. Just take your time. So that's that part. With the bumper part, that part there, can you see the bumper? Mark out a piece of wood and simply, if you come across here, using um, some um, goggles if you want to, and I, in fact you, you should really wear goggles on this, uh, turn it on. go in the hole and then gradually turn it under power okay don't try and turn it too fast hold it down don't try there you go a lot of science it's quite easy stuff then you can sand that on a power sand if you've got one, or do it by um, hand sandpaper over here. Right, so as I say, um, sand this, sand all parts, and you can do it by hand sanding like that. Lots of people prefer power sanding, but often this is as good, and it doesn't damage the wood as quickly, and you can't go wrong as quickly. So just get that, and that forms, um, if we look at this again, your bumper part there. 
and that can be glued on. Keep referring to your design, it's there for you to use. There, okay. Um, now going back to the, um, the main body part, I'm going to just quickly show you how we're going to cut out the window, which will actually be there. And I'll quickly show you that. I've done the cuts for the tenon saw. I'm putting in the coping saw. You could do this with the fret saw, the power fret saw again. You get to the bottom of the um, the mark, and then you come across horizontally. One, two, three, four, and the same to the other side. You can file that smooth. You can file that smooth across and get that nice and smooth. Okay, there. And then do the same to the other side. And then you have your window. Okay. This can just be cut out with a tenon saw, a cut that way and a cut that way. And the same for the piece at the back. So let's go back to the design. Can you see? That will fit into there. You just cut a piece to fit in there. And we've cut the piece to fit in the front. Now, for the roof, get a piece of scrap wood. And if you go back to this one, there's the roof. Mark out a hole. Again, just the same. Mark it with a tri-square. You know what one of those are. I'm sure. Mark it with a tri square so it's nice and level. In pencil, not pen, because it tends to uh, damage the wood. And then you can trim the corners, you can chisel out this, and that will slot into there, just like this one. Now, lastly, to put it together, you glue it so it's all neatly lined down like this, perhaps. And you can put your cylinder in already, the one you've already planed up. Glue it all down. And then we can put the wheels in. So you, you've made a line from front to rear. You've put this piece of wood in here. And it's nice and level and glued. Make two lines. Transfer the lines down to the other side so they're the same. Yeah, you can do that with a tri-square again. Transfer the lines down and round to the other side. So important at this stage that that depth and there is the same on the other side. You can make a little hole with a screwdriver to start with. Just a little hole, even that. Just make a little indent on the marking. And the best, the best tool to use is the bradle, which looks like, the, like that. If you come back, cameraman, you can see it, what the bradle looks like there. Basically a sharpened uh, screwdriver type bit. Um, and then you put your screw for the wheel you can countersink that if you want to with a countersinking bit which um, looks like that in a drill and you turn it about five times allows the head to sink in called a countersinking bit they like that really easy and then you line it up and screw it in with a screwdriver which i'm sure all of you have seen before you could do this with the power drill but if you do, what can happen is you over tighten it and damage it. Now, turn it so it's tight, like that, so you can't turn the wheel, and come back about a turn and it should spin. All right, you can even put a washer behind so there's a slight gap there, and the washer allows the wheels to spin. So, you do that. Let's do another one, countersink it, put the screw in so it sticks out that far, find the hole little mark you've made, add a screwdriver, a screwdriver looks like that, it's a, it's a posi drive it's called, some call them Phillips heads, and screw it in, you need a little bit of strength for this, tighten it up and come back about a, a turn, a little bit maybe, and then have to spin, and you do that for all the sides, we'll take our design away now, and then once you've got all four on, it should work properly. Okay, so look, you should be clever enough, I'm sure all of you are, to do this on your own. And that's the thing, isn't it? These projects teach you so many things 
and you can move very quickly on to much more complicated things. So trying to work something out on your own actually makes your life much easier for you as you move forward onto the next projects that we're doing on shed hacks. Now once you've done this project, what I suggest you do, you can think about other detail. You may want to put that on the front, a bit strange, but it does work. And you may want to make a little man that sits up here. So the man sort of sits like that. You could turn that on the lathe, couldn't you? Um, or you could just make it um, um, from small pieces of wood. Okay, great project to, um, to do when you're about 12 or you're leaving 11. Um, I've had some people saying they've made it when they're only 10 years old. Um, just briefly here, scan across some of the tools, cameraman. There's the plane we'll be using, the block plane, and you've used that to tidy up the edges. Um, I could just briefly, briefly show you that for some of you that have forgotten. You put your plane, piece of work in the desk, in the, in the vise, and just plane it across about 30 times and you'll soon, can you see, you'll soon get down to that angle. Label up your work so you know um, where each piece, piece goes and you don't get confused and make sure you've got all the kit you need at hand okay and all these extra top pieces and things trim off the corners nobody likes sharp corners so um, I, I do that in the sand now great shed hacks and uh, one thing is thank you for the support on the, all our other videos and uh, shed hacks There are all the tools, guys. And of course your vice. Okay, thank you.